live. We did it. All right. Woohoo. Okay. Well, welcome to another AMA. We are so excited for folks to be here. Um, for those of you who haven't joined these AMAs before, it's an opportunity to ask experts in sales and go to market and startups all of your burning questions. So we have Alex here today, which I'm very excited about. Um, before we dive in, feel free to write your you know, what company you're at, where you live in the chat so that we know who we're chatting with. Um, and I'll do a quick intro to Alex and have some questions. And then we can also open it up to folks to answer any of your questions. So um, quick intro to Alex. He is the CEO and co-founder of Doc. I actually met Alex before he was the founder of Doc or maybe just beginning to found. And I was beginning to start Pocus. And I was asking him all the best practices of marketing and got all of the all of the insight from him. So Doc is a client-facing workspace for sales, onboarding, renewals, customers like Loom, Nux, Logitech. Um, and before Doc, he was a VP of marketing at Lattice, where he was the third employee and then ran marketing for five years. Um, so we're very excited to have you here, Alex. Anything I missed? No, it was a good, good intro and really excited to be here. And it's like, it's so cool to see how how far Pocus has come. I mean, I remember that early conversation we had. I think that like, you barely had a a product or like some some product going um and we were talking about like community stuff and it's amazing what you've built with like the whole whole focus community so yeah like excited to, to see it it's awesome yeah I, mean, I love seeing the growth of doc and i vividly remember saying alex how do i start a community what do i do and something that you said to me was you know there has to be kind of like a group building something together and moving the needle forward and talked a lot about how you created that in hr and now you're doing it again so before I keep going off different tangents, I'd love to hear a little bit about yourself and how you even went from being third marketer to becoming a founder. Yeah, I guess the the quick backstory with me is like I never even thought about like doing business stuff. I thought I would just be a lawyer. My parents are both lawyers. I was like, oh, that's an easy job. I'll just do that. You make good money. But then sometime in college, I was like, all right, I want to make money online. This seems cool. I think it was the time like social network get got published, you know, that that movie. And I was like, all right, this is this is cool. And so I sort of went down this path of, okay, how do I be an entrepreneur? I kind of got bit with that bug and I was like, how to do it. And I and I had a conversation with um a, like a VC family friend at the time. And he's like, you got to go get real skills before you go start a company. Because you you can't just like join the startup. Be like, I would be helpful. Like you got to like do something, right? And have some value add. And so um I kind of scrambled to figure out what to do. I went and did uh, cold calling at Yelp uh, for a year, which was which was fun. But then I really found uh, my my niche in, in marketing. I started working at this uh, marketing agency in D.C. called Blue State Digital. They were famous because they did Obama's campaigns. And so that's where I really grew up in sort of my marketing framework and lens. And long story short, that brought me out to California because Google is my my client. And so I did that for a year. Uh, and then I got really lucky. I joined Lattice as the third employee. My roommate at the time was actually the first employee. And so I was like, I want to help I with know you didn't know that. Yeah. So I was literally like sitting on the couch being like, I really want to do a startup. I was actually trying to start my own rid of startups on the side. And um, I ended up meeting Jack, who's the founder of Lattice. We hit it off um, and we can get into kind of that whole journey. But it was an amazing ride for me going from the first marketer to running a team of 20, zero in revenue to over 50 million. And Lattice is now, you know, over 100 million in, in revenue. And then my experience at Lattice led me to start Doc, and I've been doing it for three years, and I really feel like I'm, I'm living my dream now. That I, you know, it took me like ten years to kind of kind of get there, but I'm I'm here now, so that's been really fun. That is awesome. Well, congratulations, first of all. That is very exciting. I'm going completely off script of the questions that I sent you. How is um, any overlap between being VP of marketing to being a founder? Do you feel like it's completely different skill sets? Um. It's funny, like when I, because I was so early at Lattice, I was like, I think I know what it's like to be a founder, and you know, and you, and and it's funny, you're like, oh man, I wish I even owned more of this company and things like that, and like I deserve this, you know, like you kind of have that feeling of like I deserve the same value as the founder, I'm the same, but so it is so radically different, I would say, in the sense of like the mental pressure, um, like every decision falls on you, and it's like well, it was so comfortable in my niche at Lattice of just focusing just on marketing stuff and like i could be like yeah the product has a problem they'll deal with that there's a bug they'll deal with that or the sales thing like that's their problem and like you know i felt a lot of accountability for the overall business but it was like mentally i could focus on my lane crush my lane and then 
other people sort of dealt with other things, financing, whatever. And the hardest part with doc, it's just like mentally, it's, there's so much to go through of, am I building, am I making the right decisions? Am I building the product the right direction? Am I thinking about our financing strategy? Like marketing is the easiest part of doc for me. Um, and I got something I like, I, I, easy. it's not easy, but like I, for me, it's like, I, I mean, there's a, I have a million ideas of stuff I want to do, but like, you know, I like execute our sort of somewhat simple playbook here. So yeah, it's funny. It's very different. And then follow-up question, um, being third marketer in zero and then maybe going to 10 million ARR and then 50, did that feel like really different roles? Yes. Um, the way I would describe it is the first year, like, you know, I was there while Lattice was figuring out product market fit. You know, we started as a goal OKR tracking company. Then we like pivoted into performance yeah. management and performance reviews. And so we didn't really have a working product and we had a working product and started to grow. And so the way I started, I think about it is the first year was sort of just Alex on his laptop doing marketing and figuring things out, learning what SaaS was. I didn't know what an MQL was. I never heard of that when I started. No yeah. No idea. Uh, I didn't know what marketing automation was. Like I, I, I had used tools like that, but we called it something else in my industry. So I was like very much just learning, but it was like, I was obsessed with trying to figure out. And so year one was like just me experimenting. And then it was kind of me plus a mini team. And then it was me plus like a real team and sort of hiring mm. um, lieutenants. And so I, you sort of learn how to be a manager and then learn how to be a manager, a manager, and then learn how to be an exec. And like each of those sort of stages is really, really different because you go from doing all the work yourself, clicking all the buttons on your laptop to how do I inspire people, not even the direct people, like my managers to go out and do the work. And so it's like really different um, style. Hmm. It's first of all, very impressive because what you hear in a lot of startups is, you know, people like every job is so different. And sometimes you need to hire externally to bring people in to make sure that they're getting to that level. And it sounds like you did a really good job of like always thinking about the next stage and kind of teaching yourself what's the next thing, whether that's like being an IC, then a manager, then a manager of managers. Are there any secret tips that you did to make that happen? I had a really close relationship with Jack, who was the CEO of Lattice. And so he was a great mentor to me and like helping think through that. Um, I also think I was so invested and aligned personally with Lattice's success. Like I knew after that, I wanted to start a company. I knew like, like Lattice felt like my chance to make it. And so I, you know, like worked my ass off and like really tried to think about like, you know, Jack hired me as just a marketing guy, but I was like, I'm running marketing forever. Like that was sort of my mentality. And I really kept up with it. And it's not without some like, you know, uh, you know, dark might be a strong word, but like, you know, dark moments of like, you know, like, you know, I remember one conversation with Jack where it was like, um, you know, can, are you the guy like to take us for the next phase of growth, right? Like after series A, maybe series B, it was like, are you, can you do this? And I'm like, well, I've done it until now. Like, why can't I do the next? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And we actually started doing some like exploratory interviews of maybe like a CMO above me and things like that. And I was like, man, these people suck. Like they don't know what they're talking, you know, like I think I know better. And it's, and it was hard because I never, I didn't know, um, whether I was good or bad, because I'd never done it before. And I was just like learning on my own. And so the the compromise, if you will, and where we kind of got to was I hired a marketing coach. And I started working with this guy, Francois Dufour, who's amazing, um, who was the old CMO of Twilio. And he was a VP of marketing at, at LinkedIn. And he, I met with him weekly and he sort of helped me um, professionalize myself. And actually he was not like, we didn't work on like marketing. It was how do I act as like an exec at a company? How do I work with a board? How do I manage priorities? Um, how do I, because, you know, like CEO, CEOs will come to the marketing people all the time and be like, I want to do these hundred things. Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? Like, let's do this. I heard my friends doing this. And it's like, you need to have the language in a way to talk to people about it. And so that was like, it's the, it, it becomes like even less about marketing as you, as you grow up within an organization, which is, which is funny. Totally. I definitely resonate with that. I, um, have an executive coach for myself, my co-founder, a lot of the leadership team. And I think it could help a ton. Just how could, because in startups, in normal companies, it, you can take the time to learn and grow. In startups, you don't have that. Like the growth comes on like weekends and nights when you're thinking and reading and listening and being introspective. So kudos to you. That's very, very impressive. Um, okay. Maybe I'll switch back to what we were actually supposed to be talking about today. Um, so one thing that I am curious about, so you're the third employee 
I actually know from talking to Dini that you went from PLG to enterprise to all different types of different growth strategies, tried content, you had the billboards, you had community, like all of these different things and frameworks. How did you test quickly like what works and what doesn't? Yeah, I think um, it it sort of changed over time, I would say. Like in the first year, like when you're really just getting started out like sub a million, it was just like, let's run a few little experiments and sort of see what happens. Like let's spend some money on Google AdWords, what kind of leads we get back. Let's run some retargeting ads. Let's see what what happens and how that elevates our brand. Let's run a webinar. Let's do a AMA. Let's confer- do a conference booth. Like I'd never done any of these things before and you you know you hear in the world like these things work for different people um and so you you, i sort of just like started to dip our toe into it i think like the dirty secret in marketing is like it all actually works it's just if you put the time and investment into it there's companies that build you know tons of revenue off of conferences there's tons who 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 invest into content marketing um there's tons that invest into community and so it all works you sort of just have to like slowly build and compound and invest. And like when I look at the mix of things we did in year one and year two at Lattice, we actually stuck with a lot of those things. It just like compounded over time. And in terms of like evaluating, um, you know, the success of different channels, like different channels have different attributes, right? Like Google AdWords, it's really clear to see, okay, this lead came in and what it, what happened with that lead. Whereas other things like, um, you know, we were sort of early in the like B2B podcast game. We did this resources for humans podcast. And um, the 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 success there was more of like a vibe, you know. We would just get tons of really qualitative feedback um, from from people about it, and it sort of just helped to elevate the the brand. And that stuff is like a little hard to like more um, you know measure. So funny you say that because early days, and someone asked, "How do you measure marketing efforts in the journey to a million in ARR?" And it's funny before I let you answer this. We in our journey to ARR in 1 million went very much what we call the vibes based strategy of like, are we getting the vibes that this works? And then we transitioned into trying to do more attribution with that mark. And it's really hard in a startup to, because you're trying to do attribution while also experimenting. Yeah. And like attribution is like a false promise. I mean, I think there was like this, um, you know, mindset and marketing over the last 10 years of like, okay, we have pixels now, we can track and all these things. And it's like, but only like 30, like I think I looked back at last, like only 30% of our marketing budget was actually like purely trackable, right? It's like digital ads and B2B buying is not linear. It's so circular and it's really hard. And, you know, we invested in like tools like Visible at Lattice to really map out the the customer touch point journey. And so there was ways where we were able to, to talk about it, like the success and to evaluate different campaigns and things like that and we can get into specifics but ultimately like i think successful marketing programs are a mix of different Mm -hmm. things right it is a multi-channel approach and you you emphasize different ones and different ones have different characteristics and different investment profiles like something at doc like we've invested a lot into seo um because i'm a big believer in inbound and you know it's nice just to like you do the investment and you put into it and there's a predictable playbook there and then you kind of get organic traffic and inbound is literally just organic traffic and direct traffic and direct traffic is, you know, driven by like word of mouth and your product and and maybe some other brand activities and and things like that. And then there's like the conference play and things like that. But if you want to do that, that requires resources and time. And and so each of these channels has different attributes. And so I like to measure um, like how we're doing in that specific channel. And then I look at the overall mix of marketing and say, hey, are we just increasing pipeline? Are we increasing um, revenue at the company? Is this good? And then you will just get feedback from your sales team, um, from your customers of like where they're finding you. Um, and like one great way to to measure it is just is your branded search traffic increasing over time? Like at Doc, we can tell if our ads are working and things like that. If the searches for like Doc sales rooms are searching um, or increasing in, in Google search is like one one example. So how did you know that you wanted to take, it sounds like the channels that work for Lattice are a little different than the channels that work for Doc. It was more, I actually think it all could still work. It was more of a prioritization of how I want to like live my life and focus as a founder, I guess. Like like for a while, I didn't want to go on, do things like this. I just wanted to like focus on the product and have marketing 
go on or I didn't want to like be traveling the world doing conferences and doing dinners. Like um, I'm not the most, um, I'm more, I don't know, I'm like a weird extrovert introvert. Like I don't get tons of energy going out to dinners and then things like that. And so, you know, I love this idea of, okay, could we just build this like big SEO um, engine? And it's, you know, it's been a giant investment. Shout out to Eric. I don't know if he's listed his call. He's done a fantastic job, but you know, it's like two, it's, but it's a long build. Um, but basically I think any successful, like any scaled company is relying on search and brand to grow their mm -hmm. business. Um, if you look at any, you know, like Google doesn't have a demand gen team, right? Like they don't necessarily need things like that. Enough people know about them. It is about investing in your brand and search at the end of the day. And so I sort of thought of that as like the core part of what marketing investment at doc. And then we'll sort of be able to layer on different things, um, around it as we get more, more, more bandwidth. Super interesting. I, it's very, I think sometimes what happens and we see this with our customers as in Pocus, they'll set up different playbooks or experiments to run. And it can, you can get into a bit of analysis paralysis on trying to figure out what is the best playbook and it's just, what's the best method to generate pipeline. And it's hard to just choose one commit and then see the results and move on to the next. It's been hard for us. I see it hard for our customers. And that's, I mean, part of the reason we built this whole playbook engine. So it resonates. Totally. I think you just got to keep it simple too. I mean, people overcomplicate yeah. this stuff like crazy and I overcomplicate it too. I've definitely been a victim of that. And it's just like, there's so many channels, so many different things, but like at the end of the day, it's like a fairly, it's, it's a, it's a simple playbook, but it's really hard to execute is sort of the way I think about um, marketing. Yeah. I mean, and I'd love to talk about, so when you were at Lattice, you talked about how, uh, you know, you got to just think about marketing, but now that you're the CEO, you think about everything. So how do you think about the intersection of marketing and sales and CS when setting up all of these different experiments and tests? Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I think at Lattice, like a big part of what, what made us successful was, you know, we didn't necessarily think of us as like a marketing versus sales team, um, we thought of ourselves as a revenue team. And it was one team, one dream. You know, that was sort of our me and Dini's mantra as we would talk about it with with the team because it's so easy to like finger point, you know, back and forth between marketing's not delivering enough leads and they all suck. And then marketing's pointing at sales and being like, you know, they're not closing it. They're not paying enough attention. And you know, there's always been situations like that. But I think it started at the top with me and Dini just being like, you know, we're going to ignore all of this like gossipy bullshit that happens within <laughs> like the, within an organization and set the mantra at the top. And, um, you know, and I think that also starts from like, you know, real metric numbers. Like, you know, you have to realize like MQL is like this like fake, you know, metric that marketers want to say we're, we're delivering. It's like, no, marketing should be tied to pipeline. And then like, honestly, ultimately revenue, like at the end of the day, it's about driving revenue and, and marketers often fall in this, this trap of like, I just got to increase the top of the funnel, which is important, but um, it's, you, if you increase the rates in the funnel, it, that, that also can be really helpful and that'll just lead to more revenue and you might need less top of funnel. And so you really need to partner with the sales team. And I always tried to treat the sales team as like my internal customer. Um, you know, I was like, how can I deliver them leads? How do I, how do I make sales happy? How do I create enough campaigns to sort of feed what they want? How do I support the operations of the, the sales team? How do I create content that answers all the different sales uh, question or product questions that come up in the sales process and then like close the loop. Like, um, are we doing, is marketing doing a good job? Like run surveys and things like that. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like treating them like this internal customer. And I think like, uh, especially as you scale, one of the important pieces is internal communication, like marketing showing their work. And I think this is something that a lot of startup marketers are like sort of bad at. And I think I was pretty good at this because um, my agency days where I had clients and I like had to show the work of like, hey, we're doing marketing, but now I got to make a deck to explain it. And so you need to like come up with a cadence to talk for marketing to sales of, um, you know, here's all the stuff we're working on. Here's the problems. Here's how we're thinking about it. And basically show you are hustling just as much as the sales team to, to, to drive revenue. That is awesome. And this collaboration between sales and CS and all those functions, did that lead at all to the founding of Doc or kind of what drove you to that? 
Yeah. Um, so the story with Doc was, okay, so I always wanted to start a company, um, as I kind of said at the beginning of this. Um, but I put it aside. I was like, Lattice, this is like where I'm going to learn. I'm not going to like work on whatever weird, uh, like I was working on like consumer ideas before Lattice and then I was like, meh. Uh, B2B is pretty cool. Um, but in the background, I was like, okay, I still want to do this. And, you know, I accomplished everything I wanted to at Lattice and more. Um, and so as I sort of kind of got to like the back half, I was like thinking about what could be a potential idea. And then I noticed this problem, you know, at the, at the sales team at Lattice. Like the story with Lattice is we were moving up market, trying to sell bigger and bigger deals. And our sales team, you know, in these bigger deals, you have to multi thread, you have to support champions. Um, and I noticed like one that was hard. Um, and it would lead to, you know, deals like uh, not closing. But then also from a marketing perspective, I was like, ah, they're not quite telling our story in the right way. They're not sending over the right stuff. Like we have this awesome case study, but they're not use sending it and, and things like this. So this stuff would sort of drive me crazy. And I was um, really into Webflow at the time. I still am love that tool. And I basically built um, a, a prototype of Doc in Webflow. Wow. Um, and so it was like this CMS that the sales team could like toggle on and off different case studies, different things. And it's, it was a crappy version of doc, but so I did that. I shared it with the sales team. I was like, this could be something. Let's see. So cool. Sort of went back to doing marketing. Uh, and, but then when I looked back on during like the year of COVID, I was like, damn, they're using this thing like a lot. Um, and so that sort of inspired doc and, um, I ended up quitting and being like, let's turn this into a real, real company. Wow. That's like every VC's dream. Yeah. <laughs> you go, you're at a hot growing company, you make it really big, and then you build something. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I'd be curious, switching gears, because I know we only have five minutes left, and it's probably the topic everyone wants to hear. Where do you see bringing the conversation of AI? What are your thoughts on there's a lot, there's a lot of things people talk about, especially in the sales and marketing and CS space. Where does your mind go in the future of AI and go-to-market tools? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I mean, I think, okay, so the way we use it today, I mean, I think there's big potential, obviously. I'll just, I'll say that. I mean, at, today at Doc, we use it mostly for like content production, like researching ideas, helping with podcast clips, things like that. Like that's immediately useful. I think there's a huge potential and honestly, the stuff Pocus is working on where it's like, all right, we have all of this data. How do we make sense of that data? How do we surface really interesting insights to people? I mean, there's like a literally huge use case for AI. Um, and actually, the, but the way I think about it, especially for our own product roadmap is um, we haven't built a single AI feature yet, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is I think you need to build a platform before you go do all this AI stuff, at least from a go-to-market perspective. And of course, you can have just an AI company but like from my perspective and the best example is like intercom you know like intercom has super powerful ai functionality now with finn but like if they just had finn i don't know like it would be that cool like no you need all of intercom you need a chat bot you need a help center you need all these things go go to market teams are consolidating their tools and so when i think about docs product strategy right of how do you build this place for revenue teams to collaborate with each other um, and their customers like we have really been focused on sort of building that platform, those workflows, that surface area of where they interact. And then I think AI is like a really interesting sort of feature add-on that you can use to, um, you know, help generate content, do different things, surface insights on top of that. So yeah, uh, it's, it's a, it's, I think we have a long way to go for, for this like AI journey, but it's definitely very uh, exciting. It's a great point. And it's something we've pushed ourselves as well to not just build AI features because they seem cool or sexy or it's a thing to do, but to really build for a problem to be solved um, and have it relate to the process. So I'm definitely, definitely in agreement. Um, I would be maybe to wrap us up one rapid fire question or maybe a couple. What is one wildly held, widely held belief that go to market leaders have that you disagree with? Um, I am pretty suspicious of outbound um, in general, uh, especially like cold outbound. Like I think there's so much uh, glory in this idea of like finding that amazing lead on LinkedIn and reaching out to them and then closing them and like, you know, sales teams love that. And like not to say that doesn't happen like it does. Um, and outbound definitely has a role, especially in the early days, like founders just should just reach out to folks. But like it doesn't necessarily scale. And I think like you should invest more into brand. So like, I think less pe people are scared of investing into brand and brand is what scales. And that is what, you know, ultimately will make everything easier. And like, you know, I think like even at Lattice, um, 
you know, 75% of our pipeline came from inbound. And actually 95% of what we called outbound really started with like a marketing touch point. Um, and so, you know, like I know signals is like all of the very popular thing these days um, and focus is definitely leading that charge. But yeah, I mean, I agree with that where it's like there is this signal and in the past it used to be called an MQL. Now we're calling it, it signals. Um, and and then there's like a marketing or a sales touch point that happens after a marketing thing, a marketing event, a product event, something like that. So, um, yeah, I think the idea of cold outbound, just pure is like really freaking hard these days, especially like with deliverability issues and things like that. I totally agree. And I think my perspective is it cold outbound has gotten harder with the introduction of AI because there's so many spammy emails going out that even if it's personalized and written by AI, it's so obvious. And then your email inbox just becomes worse than ever. Yes. Yeah. No, 100%. And then going back to that AI conversation, like, yeah, we're hesitant to use it in emails because you could, it's like amazing how well humans could tell like, oh, that, that feels off. Like that's not quite what it would, would be. And it's like, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. And I, hopefully, you know, I think it will get there over time, but yeah, it just, it just doesn't feel authentic. What do you think about cold calling? Um, it, I think it works. I mean, I know like companies like Nooks, uh, and Orem are growing like crazy and Nooks is one of our, our happy customers. So I will give them a shout out. I know I talked to Jonathan who's the VP of sales there and they are growing very fast. So like, I think the market demand is definitely there. Um, we do not have a big enough team, I would say where we are super focused on it right now at, at, at doc, but yeah, I think, I think it's interesting. Although like I don't know. I hated cold calling as an SDR when I was at Yelp. So that's not something I <laughs> love to do. And then like I ignore every email. I mean, a phone number I don't recognize now. So I think, I don't know, these channels come and go, I, I think. I agree. I think channels come and go. I think also different channels work for different types of businesses that have different types of buyers and how yeah. big the contract sizes. So I do think I'm definitely in alignment with you that you got to kind of Cold outbound doesn't work. When it comes to warm outbound and using signals, being willing to test things, experiment, see what works, lean into it. Um, most things probably work. And it's a matter of like how much you actually put into it to make it work. Totally. And the way I think about it is like you as a marketing team, you need like surrounds on marketing. You invest in all these campaigns. You invest in all the ads. Like you do all of the things and that creates signals for your sales team to follow up on. And like you can invest in a bunch of different buckets there, but it's sort of like that simple and you can, you know, have that that playbook sort of moving forward and that'll, that'll grow grow your business, more pipeline, all the things. Yep. Easy. Just yeah, like easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, before we drop, where can folks find you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I just search Alex Craig. I don't really know what my profile is. Uh, I have a little website I haven't posted on in a while, craigov.co. You can go, go look back on some old blogs. I, I should do that more uh we got a little podcast grow and tell or uh you can you can watch alexa me interview alexa um and uh and then go check out doc uh doc.us is our website would love to help you with uh sales deal rooms customer onboarding content management customer renewals we do a, a lot of different things so would love for you to 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 check it out amazing alex thank you so much for being here this was really really fun to catch up and it's been too long so we'll do our proper catch up in a couple weeks as well and I am so excited to hear about all the progress at Doc and um, so many incredible insights for our community from Doc and Lattice. So really appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me.